and welcome to this week's look at the major news stories, or some of them, that have been affecting the market so far. And what are we going to talk about this week? Well, we're going to start with the Swiss franc and some inflation news in Switzerland. Obviously, still a key driver in the markets. We're then going to look at the Canadian dollar and perhaps uh, uh, the, the impact it has if things are going slightly differently. We're going to take a look at gold. That's been having a rare old start to the month. And we're going to finish off with Tesla, which um, in direct opposition to gold has been going the other way. Okay, well, let's have a quick look at the Swiss franc. And that weakened, the value of the Swiss franc weakened after the inflation news. Now, Monday's data coming out of Switzerland showed that inflation was at its lowest level in nearly two and a half years. Inflation was 1.2% compared to the year before. Now, the previous month's figure was 1.3%, so a further reduction. Now, Reuters reported that the SMB, the Swiss National Bank, has kept inflation in the target zone since May of 2023. I think it's fair to say they hadn't or they didn't experience quite the same levels that some of the major economies have done and that was all despite the background of rising rents sales taxes going up and of course as we all know increases in energy prices but what does it mean well obviously a lot of people are drawing the conclusion that it's more likely that the smb will cut rates at its next meeting on the 21st of march certainly a day to keep your eyes on thus market participants could well expect a looser policy and a more affordable franc and the franc weakened off the back of the news. In fact, Euro against the Swiss franc reached its highest level since November 2023. If we take a quick look at the chart, what does that show us? Well, the price has broken through the downward channel that we're showing in red that has been in effect since last summer. Since the start of the year, the rate has increased by more than 3.5%, which gives us the trend lines you can see there in blue. Levels to look out for, well, important levels are 0 0.94730 and 0 0.95580, which have changed from historical resistance to support by the looks of it. Also worth noting that the daily RSI is showing that after the growth we've seen, the market is in the overbought zone and the preconditions for a correction could possibly be being formed. If it does continue to increase, the level of um, 0 0.96800 could become a bit of a test. We've seen that level being important before and it, it helped form some important reversals in the euro against the Swiss franc uh, previously going back over the last couple of years. So again, Switzerland, good control it looks like over inflation and what we're seeing off the back of that is a weakening Swiss franc. Be prepared for a bit of volatility. There are more inflation figures out this week. Okay, for our second video, we're gonna we're gonna switch up to the other side of the Atlantic, but we're gonna stay looking at currencies, and that's the Canadian dollar. And the fact the Canadian dollar actually strengthened after a Bank of Canada decision on interest rates. So Wednesday. The Bank of Canada kept interest rates at 5% for the fifth time in a row. And the Bank of Canada wants clearer signs that inflation is definitely under control. Uh, the governor of the bank, Tiff Macklem, said they are concerned the underlying inflation pressures remain in place. It also said it was too early to cut and that there was a clear consensus within the Board of Governors on that fact. So again, quite a clear indication he's trying to give, give a clear message that rate cuts are not in the very near distant future. He also said that the Canada is in a difficult phase of the monetary cycle. So these are quite hawkish comments. And off the back of those, we saw the Canadian dollar rise, particularly against the US dollar. So we'll take a look at the chart on this one. And what's that showing us? Well, for most of 2024, the price has been in the channel that we're showing in blue, a couple of small little breaks from that. But you can see fairly consistent. Wednesday's news lowered the price from the upper limit of that channel down to the median line quite a significant move and at the psychological level of one spot three six has retained its role as resistance despite the bulls trying repeatedly to break through that level now if the bears to maintain the initiative the price may fall through and break through that median line it may also break through the local trend line that you can see which is in orange and if it continues it may attempt breaking through that psychological level of one spot three five now if this scenario does come to bear 
obviously the target may well be the lower boundary of the channel in the first place. But it's fair to say that news on inflation and interest rates remain prime drivers for currency markets, particularly the US dollar against the Canadian dollar. And it's worth noting that Thursday afternoon, the ECB interest rate decision gets released. So be prepared for a bit of volatility and don't forget your risk management techniques. Okay, now it's time to swap our attention to the commodity markets and gold, that is gold against the US dollar in particular, has set a historical record exceeding $2,160 per troy ounce. Now, the previous high was at uh, $2,135, $2,135, but it passed $2,160, $2,160 Thursday morning. Um, this was mainly off the back of Treasury yields weakening on the hopes that the Fed, the US Fed, that is, is going to cut rates soon. Now, obviously a lot of talk about that in the market, but on Wednesday, a Fed chief said at some point this year, it will be likely appropriate to ease policy restrictions. So whether rhetoric recently has been, you know, careful, don't expect too much in the short term. Certainly a little message coming out there that whilst it may not be immediate, there should or we expecting to make some movements later this year. And in fact, looking at sort of sentiment, the traders are seeing a 70% chance of a rate cut as early as June this year now for for the Fed. Clearly, that's going to have some sort of impact. Let's take a look at the, the chart for gold. And what we can see is the price is in the ascending channel, which we're showing in blue. And after the false breakout of a lower border, the price overcame the downward trend line that you can see in red and the resistance at 20 $92,090. The strong upward impulse has led to the RSI entering the extreme overbought zone. You can see that towards the bottom of the chart. Now, although that ascending channel has room for growth to the upper limit, the price has gone up by more than 5% since the start of March. So you see, it's been a pretty tasty month for gold. Thus, it could be vulnerable to a correction, maybe down to somewhere like that median line. Obviously, nothing set in stone, but this sort of rapid price movement can be a factor that leads to a small correction. Uh, James Steele, who's the chief precious metal analyst at HSBC, has said that the upward trajectory of gold may well slow down as these record high prices could cool demand, particularly from central banks looking at their gold reserves. So it's certainly been an interesting week or so, or week or two in the gold market. We're at record historical highs, but as I say, it is possible there's a correction coming. It's possible there may be other sharp movements on the upside. So again, don't forget your risk management techniques. Okay, we're going to finish off this week as we often like to with an individual equity. And obviously, we've been having some pretty good news equity share wise over the last couple of months with some very positive reports. But the Tesla share price has fallen just over 9% in just two days this week. Now, Monday, the shares opened at $199.34 per share. Tuesday, they closed at $180.51 per share. Quite a fall. And in fact, one of the impacts of that, um, one of the headlines, if you like, is that Elon Musk lost his title of the world's richest man. That returned to Jeff Bezos. What are the main drivers behind this sudden decrease in Tesla shares? Well, there was news of a temporary shutdown of the Giga Berlin plant. The Giga plants, obviously, they're huge manufacturing centers. After a, an episode or an incident of arson by a group claiming that Musk is devouring land, resources, and people. Obviously, any form of fire and arson attack will have some form of detrimental effect on production for a period of time. There's also news that deliveries from the Shanghai plant have dropped to their lowest level in over a year. Now that may well be due to some fierce competition from Chinese EV manufacturers. We're seeing Chinese EV manufacturers come to markets across the world now. Um, so definitely it would appear that there's increased com competition, particularly in that area of the world. Now, Morgan Stanley analysts has lowered their target price from $345 a share to $320 a share. And on top of that, predicted a decline in, um, in sales for 2024, the whole year. So let's have a little look at the chart. What's that showing as well? The price is in the downward channel we're showing in red which is acting uh, that price is acting noticeably weaker than the broader market we've seen pretty strong market performance across many
many sectors in the US. Tesla's sort of bucking the trend, at least in the very short term. In March, the median line acted as resistance. The price has been unable to consolidate above $200 per share, which in fact, back in November 2023 was in fact support. Now, if this bearish momentum continues, the price could reach the lower boundary, which is circa $170 per share and sort of revisit 2024 lows. Even lower than that, we're looking for support around the $155 per share mark. We saw that level was formed uh, from a gap last, I think it was January last year, and tested back in April of last year as well. Of course, nothing set in stone. And on the other hand, for example, Cathie Wood's ARC funds are in fact increasing their long position as we speak and have been doing for some time now. Some analysts were stating, well, you know, a pullback like this could in fact provide an opportunity moving forwards. We know Tesla and Elon Musk are never far from the headlines, but certainly not been a good week. And where we go from here, well, it's pretty much anybody's guess at the moment, as ever new stories will drive the market. So keep your eyes and ears open. Don't forget your risk management techniques and we'll wish you luck with your trading in the week ahead. Bye for now.